Hello everyone, it's Nikki Batgirl D'Angelo here, and today we are going to take a look at the 3.6 PTU. And I'm going to take this beautiful hunk of junk out, my constellation Andromeda. Actually, mine is a phoenix, but you don't actually get your ships inside of the PTU. You're getting an assortment of ships, and I think they really want you to run over and play with the kiosk, learn how to purchase ships, or have fun purchasing ships at the different ship sales locations within the Stanton system. But today we're going to take a look at something different. We're going to go and jump between three different Lagrange points, and we're going to take a look at three different space stations. Now, Chris Roberts is really 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 big about diversity in the game we know that because we have somewhere around 10 or 20,000 different types of ships right now well that's a big joke but you understand where I'm coming from he wants there to be a huge amount of diversity because diversity makes things more realistic more believable and what we're going to be looking at today is going to be three of the space stations three different space station types that are scattered throughout the Stanton system. So I'm going to go real quickly. We're not going to go inside because this patch they did the outsides, the exteriors, and I think the next patch you're going to see the interiors updated. And if it's not the next one, it's the one after that. The biggest thing to understand now is that if you do go to these different space stations right now, the interiors aren't going to quite match up with the exteriors at this point. In the future, you're going to have a lot more uh, a lot more realism with what you see on the outside and how you see it on the inside. All right, so let's take you to the first of these space stations. Now, in retrospect, I should have taken a 600, a 300i, or something with a much better canopy. Maybe even the... Andromeda being replaced by the Aquila? Well, I don't know. But space is a very bright place. We know this because look at the sun, which evidently is the same size no matter which one of these different space stations you go to. Um, something that I hope that they do fix for better realism in the future. If you go to something like all the way out in Microtech, the sun should be a different size than it is when you're over near Crusader or Hurston, which is the closest of the planets in the Stanton system. But we're going to take a look at that and make sure I'm not ma just making things up as I go. So this one is in CRUL1. So this is the Lagrange one point. And what we get is a very, 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 very big space station at this point with all different levels. And I can imagine them being a commerce level, a living level, a manufacturing or engineering level, and then power, right? These are all the things that have to be here. And I could only imagine that they do have these things all mapped out. This space station is tremendous, and it gives me hope to see what's going to happen to something like Port Alisar in the future. Now, because the space stations have grown, because where you park your ship could be anywhere, anywhere at all on this space station that has these different landing pads. You can see three right there around the ring. And then as you get closer over here to this arm, there's actually some landing pads out here too. So the elevators have become transporters, kind of like what's on the Starship Enterprise. So Yes, they could go vertically, but they could also go horizontally, getting you from point A to point B with little problem. They've also updated this over in the landing areas. I was only have experience using the one in R Corp, Area 18, but it did the same thing. It allows me to go from my hangar to any other hangar or landing pad that's over at the Hurston area, oh sorry, the R Corp Area 18 landing. Here, if you land, you'll be able to go to any of the docking bays or landing pads. I think that's pretty cool. The attention to detail on these is pretty vast. I'm 
very much liking this. And this is something that you've seen in something like Elite Dangerous with all the different types of space stations that they have at this point. In the beginning, it was just a spinning cube, but now they have a bunch more there. So I'm very happy about this. So let's go over to the HURL1, Hurston L1 point, and take a look at the one that we will find over there. Now, I have a second thought on that one. I, I do want to spend a little bit of time talking about some of the other things that are definitely coming to 3.6, and one of those being the addition of the ability to rent ships, and I think that's going to actually build a lot more love from people that haven't played the game in a while, because it'll give people an opportunity to try to reach out and complete some missions, go out, do some cargo runs, maybe go out and do some mining and make a bunch of UEC and then come back into the game and, well, come back into port and use that money to purchase ships. Now, I'm not sure what the payouts are going to be in this version of the game. Hopefully they are large enough, more than ample enough, to garner in a whole bunch of cash so you could try out each and every one of the ships over time. Yeah, I know. You're laughing. I'm laughing too. That's probably not what they're going to do. But being that it is an alpha, I believe that is what they should do. You should try to garner a little bit more um, excitement around the spacecraft that you have in the game by offering that up. A uh, couple of things that aren't going to be in the game. Well, let's talk about just one right off the bat. We know that the couple of ships have been moved specifically. I think it was the Banu Defender. But I was really looking forward to, and can actually wait for it, but I was looking forward to the enhanced character um, creation system. I, I currently am very... I'm, I'm going to say this. I am not a fan of the character creator at this point. I don't like having to choose bits and pieces from other faces, put three in a row. It just doesn't make sense to me. I want to be able to effectively mold a face kind of like I can in Fallout 4, kind of like I can in... Well, if you want to look at a great um, character creator, look at Elite Dangerous, look at EVE Online, even though you never even see your character. Those both have pretty decent character creation engines, and I wish we had something more akin to that because it's very difficult for me to actually get the look I want. And yes, wait until they have more heads, wait until they have more this, and then it's just going to be spending too much time going through too many different combinations of faces or heads and trying to come up with what I want when I could have just sculpted it right there if they had a system more like the one in Fallout 4. I don't know. If you like it and you think I'm wrong, please comment below and tell me what you think would be a great character generator for this game. Alright, let's get over to our wonderful space station that is in HURL1. This time I'm going to let you see one of the deficiencies that I find in the game, and that's here we are dropping out of our quantum leap, or quantum jump, or quantum space. And we're about ready to start searching for that space station. And they still don't have any way to lock a target unless you go into the B, all right, B, which would be the quantum jump, uh, I guess it's the quantum jump system, to be able to find that object that you're looking for if it's a space station, rest stop, whatever it is. That's something I thought that they should have. In fact, there's two things that they should have in this game already. They should have figured it out already, and that's going to be the coordinate system. And I, I have no idea why that's still not in the game. It doesn't seem hard to just copy something that, like, NASA already uses. Coordinates in space, coordinates on planets. You know, they just change from A to B. I must not be very familiar with programming, because I think it should be a lot easier than it is. 
Anyway, we're going to point ourselves towards the rocks ahead and hopefully find what we're looking for. And I'm going to... I'm going to put the pedal to the metal and try to get there as quickly as possible on this one. I just want you to see what the journey is like when you're looking for these things. Obviously, when the game is live, we're going to probably have a completely different multifunction display, display in front of us because I know that they are currently working on improving the way that the MFDs work in the game. Well, it might be a little bit different. I won't say completely different. But I'm really interested to see how this develops into something that's more like what you would use today. I also hate the fact that the text on the upper left-hand side is very intrusive where they put it. It just seems to always be overlaying on one of my a MFDs, and I feel like it, it should be more intuitive, more more there should be more AI built into that. So it knows where the MFDs are on the screen and it moves itself into a different direction. I'm also very much not a fan of the current version of the Moby Glass. It's not that I don't like it, it's that I just think it should be something a little bit different. And I'll work on explaining that to you as time goes on. I, I do have ideas. Anyway, that's the space station in front of us. Now, obviously, everything is modular. Everything is modular. So you're going to see pieces that are kind of like what the last one was. We might see pieces missing from this one. It seems like the tall um, vertical structure that went through the center of this ring is not on this one. But it still has most of the components that the other one had for the commerce deck, I, I guess you can call it, or the rest area deck. And I hope to God they really do a great job on the inside. The interiors are going to be wonderful on these, I am sure. One of the uh, issues I had with the previous versions of the rest stop were they weren't believable. They didn't have that area that, like, you know, there should be bathrooms and other items like that that when you get off of a long journey or you're just trying to get refueled you can go maybe you can take a shower you know model yourselves after a real truck stop that's what i was thinking so there should be some kind of really horrible restaurant in these like a really horrible diner maybe a denny's maybe the space um version the star citizen version of a denny's that would be funny anyway I really do think that they've got these down very well. And these space stations, I think, are going to start giving us just that little more diversity in the game. And here I am trying to get a better look at it. And you can see all of the landing pads around this one. And I'm sure there's still a landing pad out on that arm that sticks out, which I wonder what that is. It's probably an array of antennas that they put out there that produce a lot of radiation so they keep them far away from the habitats and the living space who knows it could be anything it could be the shield generator for this it could be the power plant for this whatever it is and take ourselves spin around try to look at it from this point of view yeah i think i think this one a lot like the other one, but still very impressive. Still very, very impressive. All right, let's move on. I think we got the gist of this one. It's just the round piece of the other one. I can't wait to see the interiors of these, just to make sure that they are indeed going to be different. All right, and here we are over at, I think it's ARC L1. So this is R Corp's L1 version of its rest stop. Now there are many more out there, right? There's rest stops in many of these different Lagrange points, but I just went to the L1s. And again, ever so slightly different from the ones that we've seen before. And I think that 
I think that these are definitely going to add what I said, that diversity, but it gives me hope that the bigger space stations, the ones where we live at, the ones where we have our ships at, are going to offer us some pretty amazing visuals when they finally come into the game. I was hoping that one of these would have a really huge observation deck with a big giant glass area, maybe made out of transparent aluminum, who knows. I was hoping that those would be in here, but I don't see any areas like that. But the biggest problem with this right now is that you're just not seeing the true size of how big these things are. This is one of the reasons why I can't, I can't wait for VR. I've been playing with my Oculus Rift S for about a month, maybe a little bit more right now, and I'm just absolutely loving it, especially flying X-Plane. In X-Plane, you really do get that depth perception and you get an idea of how big everything around you is. And I think that's important in a video game, and I'm wondering how, how important VR is going to be to games like this in the future, just to be able to get that perspective. Even if just to play it sometimes, to understand the true size of your ship, the true size of the space stations and the landing pads that you're putting these things on. Right now, they're just objects that look you could, like you could reach out and hold them, but these things are actually tremendous. In fact, I can't wait for Squadron 42 to go to beta so we could just see that kilometers long, kilometers, plural, long Shubin mining facility. That's going to be pretty awesome. So I'm going to just put it over here underneath the space station and try to just use my new understanding of the flight model to try to get around this and take a look at certain elements of it like the double ring system that's pretty awesome I'm, you know when I was doing this I was just imagining what possibly could be in each of these areas and are they gonna go out of their way to actually build out the interiors of this so we can go into all different spaces or are they gonna just make it like all right, here's a whole bunch of rooms you can't go into, but here's the ones that you can go into. Which is just going to frustrate me because I really want to do some exploration inside of this to see how does it tick, how does it work, what things did they build into it. Ah, that's just so awesome. Before I close out, I just want to talk a little bit about hover mode. It's something I really have to learn how to how to manipulate. I think my biggest problem here is I removed I, I removed my toggle to put it into decoupled mode and I think when you get into hover mode it should automatically put you into decoupled mode and I found it just a little bit weird to use this mode and anything any kind of flight model that requires me to look at the outside of my vehicle is one that I'm really not going to enjoy playing. So I'm hoping that this was just all me and not the game itself. But I didn't have a problem with my previous play when I was flying around in my 300i with hover mode landing on one of the space stations and going to check out the interior. And that's when I figured out that the interiors weren't done yet because I don't read the, the roadmap deep enough sometimes. But I, I didn't have a big issue with it there because I was able to get right over the pad and land. But in this situation, perspective is a little bit off and you don't really get that. So, so what I'm missing is if you remember anything about the original landing mode, you had to line up dots and red lights and green lights and you'd get this little icon of your ship that was just above the landing pad so you knew when you needed to land. Something like that needs to come back, especially for ships of this size. I should never have to look at the exterior of my ship to land. So I'm hoping that's something that will be coming with the redesigned user interface, redesigned MFD, whatever you want to call it. And you know, this is pretty much it for my first video of 
3.6. I'm going to go jump in, play a little bit more, have some fun looking at the uh, rent ship rentals and the ship purchasing kiosks and you know talk a little bit about it. I'm just going to hold off on a state of the game until this version is actually out. Just something to be aware of. There are some bugs, there is a lot of lag at times, and there are many crashes that are all getting fixed over time. So, wow, look at this smooth, really nice landing. I'm pretty happy with the way it lands. And you know the drill at this point. If you like this episode, please click the thumbs up button. If you do subscribe, be sure to click on the notification icon. Click on the notification icon as it will keep you up to date on all my future video releases. And with that said, folks, you all be safe out there, and I'll talk to you soon. Oh, and be sure to go out to patreon.com, P-A-T-R-E-O-N.com, forward slash Batgirl. If you want to help support the channel, as little as a dollar a month helps me keep going with this. And I really do appreciate all my patrons that are out there. And as we get back into these videos, I will be thanking each and every one of you on all of my episodes. Thank you very much. And as I said before, I'll talk to you soon.